Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the LeBron 9 Low LeBron Old Palmer. I'm gonna be breaking down all the details of this sneaker and tell you guys why I think people are sleeping on these. And if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is The DNA Show. Hey! On this channel, I love breaking down different shoes, giving you guys in-depth reviews and helping you turn your hobby into a hustle. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing and joining the fam. We're on the road to a million subscribers and you could be the next one to get us there. So like typical fashion, we're gonna crack this box open and see what these shoes are talking about. Then we'll get into the history of the shoe. Looking at the overall box, we have a LeBron branding right here on the side and then you have your red LeBron logo on the top and the same LeBron branding on the other side. Going to the size tag, it reads Nike LeBron 9 Low, white, lime, bright, mango. Size 13, just for me. Retail on these was 200 bucks, and I feel like that might have been just a little bit steep, but at the same time, I think there's some cool hidden details on this shoe that not too many people know about, so we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but for now, let's crack this box open. So it has a little tab right here, and then you're gonna pull out the shroud, and then you have the paper. Oh, you got the shoe. Okay, first impressions of this sneaker. Honestly, I feel like these are very similar to the OG sample. I have seen those in the past, but it's been a really long time since I've seen a pair in hand and I don't have a pair to give you guys side-by-side -side comparisons but overall I feel like they did a solid job off of my initial memory of the previous pair from 2012 and with that being said you know what we got to do before we start breaking down all the details we got to talk about the history first as most people remember LeBron decided to go to the Miami and we saw the Miami South Beach LeBron 8s and that was definitely a very iconic model and colorway still to this day shortly after that in 2012 we then saw LeBron rocking the LeBron old Palmer LeBron 9s and we had the reverse LeBron o Palmers that we saw LeBron walking as well. So yes, back in 2012, there were two different versions of this when it comes to the samples that we saw LeBron rocking on or off the court. And although I wish they would drop both of them, I'm still not mad that they came out with these because now I finally got a chance to get my hands on the shoes. So for those of you that are wondering, what is the LeBron o Palmer and why did they even come up with this crazy colorway? Yes, this has resemblances of Miami and you see the palm trees and different stuff like that, but these were also inspired by Arnold Palmer. He was a famous golfer that loved to drink lemonade and iced tea mixed together. And eventually over time, he ended up coming up with his own drink called the Arnold Palmer, named after him. There's also a restaurant in Palm Springs. I've been there multiple times. I love their food. And if you're ever in the Palm Springs area, definitely check out the restaurant because they got some fire stuff. And speaking of the taste of the food, honestly, a Arnold Palmer is one of the top drinks out there in my opinion as well. And as you can see, LeBron liked it a lot too. We also saw in 2015, the LeBron 12 low had the LeBron Palmer colorway on it. And we also saw the LeBron 18 low have the LeBron Palmer colorway on it. In my opinion, I feel like they should have just gave us the retro and not really mixed it with those other models because it just doesn't really look the same based off of the structure of the shoes. But at the end of the day, it's okay because 10 years later, we finally got the shoe. So with all all that being said, let's start breaking down all the styles, cuts, materials, and the hidden details on this sneaker. Starting with the bottom of the shoe, you have your classic LeBron 9 outsole. You have a translucent kind of lime green type of colored vibe right here. You got a more of an infrared pinkish color on the center of the ball of the foot. And then you got your LeBron logo right here and a turquoise and green. Now, one thing that's really special about the outsole that I'm not sure too many people knew, these actually glow in the dark. And we saw this on their old sample back in 2012 as well. So I think for them to carry that on, giving us the same glow in the dark outsole like 2012 honestly that's a nice touch now going up to the midsole you have a full air unit going from the front to the back end of the foot this has also got that infrared vibe and then you got that turquoise liner just above that and then to the upper oh the upper so like I was talking about earlier you have those kind of palm tree vibes giving you that nice like I said either Palm Springs Miami tropical whatever you want to say it kind of gives you that vibe when it comes to this shoe with the all-over print on the sock liners or around the eye stays here with the laces lock in or even on the yellow materials all throughout the foot. You have an infrared swoosh with a blue trim just around that. And then you have the same thing on the outside of the foot as well. Going to the laces and the tongue of the shoe, you kind of got that turquoise coloring as well with the LeBron print on the front end of the laces at the bottom end. And then I think the lace tips have a little detail. Actually, no, these ones don't. So I remember on the, I think it was the Miami Knights. Let me see real quick. Yeah, see, so the Miami Knights, they got the LeBron 8 and everything like that. We'll get into comparisons in a second. I'll talk about this in a minute. But the lace tips definitely uh, don't have any special details and there's no addition 
additional laces that come with these but i think with the glow in the dark element and all over prints and especially the insoles right here on the insoles this is the same as the og sample as well with the lebrano palmer and the all over print now going to the top of the tongue you have lebron james autograph right here and then on the back end of the heel you have a gold kind of bronze shit with the lebron james logo and a plastic tab just behind that so overall looking at the details of this shoe i feel like they did a really good job replicating the og sample but i feel like everybody just doesn't appreciate this shoe as much as the collectors did 10 years ago so now it draws to me the question of like do y'all even like these anymore? Is this shoe fire or trash? I had to know. So I asked the people on Instagram, what do you think about this shoe? And this is what they said. 60% of the people chose fire and 40% of the people chose trash. And honestly, I can understand those results simply because this was 10 years removed. We have seen so many different generations and types of sneakerheads come into the game. And as we know, Kobe, LeBron, KD, their models were hitting way harder, you know, eight, 10, 12 years ago than honestly, Nike basketball right now is just truly not doing that well. <laughs> if we're being honest, I feel like LaMelo Ball, all the other players in different leagues, you know, we got different players standing out with other brands. It's gonna be interesting to see the competition and how things lie when it comes to a sneaker like this, or like I was talking about earlier, you have the Miami Knight LeBron 8. This shoe right here, was ultra rare, ultra exclusive, ultra expensive. And when you talk about this one, these were even more rare, more exclusive, and more expensive. People were willing to spend a couple thousand dollars on shoes like this back 10 years ago. So just think about that, the magnitude of spending $2,000 on a pair of shoes back 10 years ago, compared to now, obviously we know people spend a couple racks on a pair of shoes, but for some LeBron lows, and $2,000 for that shoe, crazy times. And now we're currently in the point where the shoe is retailing at 200 bucks and still sitting on shelves at your local malls. Now, do I think that's a problem? No, because people like me that love the shoe and wanna get the shoe, they can actually get it for an affordable price and be satisfied with the sneaker. But at the same time, it is definitely interesting to see the shift in the culture and what people like then and what people like now. And obviously for older sneaker heads like me, it's a little bit more nostalgic. So we're always happy to add this to our collection, whether it may be seven years, ago five years ago two years from now whatever it may be i'm sure a lot of og heads out there that remember those good basketball days they were all happy when they saw this shoe coming out and because i was on the topic kind of talking about these two shoes and how nostalgic they were i wanted to know which one people liked the most because honestly i had a hard time deciding 57 percent of the people chose the miami knights and 43 percent of the people chose the lebrano palmers let me know what you think down below in the comment section there's no right or wrong answer i'm just interested to see how you guys feel about this same question so now the next thing that comes along these lines is how much is this shoe gonna be worth and what is it hitting for now obviously like I said you can still find these typically in most retailers retail was $200 and I know some people said that was a little expensive but I think with the glow in the dark touch and all the nice details on the shoe I feel like it is kind of worth it saying the technology and everything that comes along those lines but when it comes to resale these things are barely even hitting for the retail value so with that being said I think you could probably find these for under retail and especially if you find a used pair you might mess around and find a used pair for 120 bucks 130 bucks and get a really good deal be able to rock the shoes appreciate them and love them and enjoy them or maybe i don't i, I can't say these are going to go to outlets but it could potentially happen. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. So overall, at the end of the day, I ended up grabbing these on Sneakers app. I just got them in the mail. I spent 200 bucks on the shoe and I am still a happy camper. Now, obviously, yes, I would love to get something for a little bit cheaper if I know that it's sitting, but at the same time, to be able to spend $200 on a shoe, knowing that this used to be worth multiple thousands of dollars, I think I'm fine. And also, don't forget to let me know how your shopping experience went with this shoe. Were you like trying to go after it and then you hit on it and you were like, oh damn, it didn't even sell out because that's low-key what happened to me but i'm sure everybody had different opinions some people even decided to pass on it let me know down below in the comment section yo if you enjoyed this video and want to grow your collection or make extra money on the side i built a vip mastermind that will teach you everything that I've learned about growing my sneaker collection over the past 15 years. This will also give you access to the DNA fam in my VIP community where we talk about investing outside of sneakers. And don't worry, if you don't plan on joining the VIP community, it's okay. I also set up a private DNA fam community that gives you access to all the behind the scenes looks from the studio and multiple chances to win free sneakers and gear from weekly and monthly challenges. So all you need to do is click on the link down below in the description or the first link pinned in the comment section. That will get you set up and into the community. I'm excited to see you guys on the inside.
If you made it to the end of this video, drop a comment down below and let me know what is your favorite place to eat in Miami. Now, I got a couple favorites, but I'm interested to see what y'all think. Let me know down below.